Welcome everybody to Atlanta Canada Cooks on May 9th, 2021. And here's mom right here with me. And we've got some incredible moms here to celebrate. And it's it's Mother's Day. And, and our episode today is going to be featured around all of the favorite things that especially our group of moms love. So I get to spoil mine today with lobster from incredible Collins Lobster in Alma, where I grew up from. And um, we're going to bring around with us some great recipes, but let's open up. And Jacqueline, please share this polar yeah. with us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a polar poem that I, uh, I love it very, very much. I, uh, I collected it on the internet uh, several years ago. And on the occasion of um, Mother's Day, I shared it with my students. Okay, so um, mother, the abbreviation of M is for the million things she gave me. O means only that she's growing old. C is for the tears she shed to save me. H is for her heart of purest gold. E is for her eyes with love light shining. R means bright and bright she'll always be. And put them together. We have the word mother, the most meaningful word to everyone. That's very beautiful. <laughs> I'm really touched. Okay. And, uh, yeah. And uh, another another one that I uh, collected yesterday, uh, it is a kind of uh, acronym. M, magnificent. O, outstanding. C, tender. H, Honorable, E, extraordinary, and R, remarkable. And then we had the word mother. So everything. happy Mother's Day to everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jacqueline. That is a beautiful share. Wow, that's a great way to sit off. And you know what? I think the other thing that we're going to be doing today is honoring the food and honoring what we're eating. And we want to say welcome to all of our guests today that are here. We're going to remind everybody to pop their microphones on mute. Um, so just as any of the chefs are kicking, only because that tends to move that camera around. We have an incredible menu today. We're so excited to bring everybody from here from Atlantic Canada Language Academy. But obviously here in this home in Canada, I'm coming in from New Brunswick. And we've got Maureen from Liverpool, Nova Scotia. We're very excited and her amazing son in Ireland. So we love bringing the global in and around. We have our beautiful Jacqueline Hen, um, mother and wonderful teacher, recruiter and everything coming in from Vietnam. Rosalind Miller, thank you so much. Extraordinary and happy Mother's Day to you. Hopefully one of your bambinos is still there. And um, she's gonna talk to us about some brunch, which is one of the things I think she's most famous for and um, everybody that knows her knows that if you want to go for a great Sunday morning, you go for brunch at Rosalind's house. And trust me, we've done it and it's well worth the drop by. Richard's going to do some toast from great uh, cocktails from Ireland and, and a couple of toasts. Jacqueline, thanks for starting that toast off to mothers. And we've got some lobster because you know what? My mom's favorite thing is lobster. So and in my getting things done up, we love Collins Lobster down in Elma, New Brunswick, which is where I spent most of my child growing up and up through. Mom spent a lot of time there. And I was cleaning all of the lobster and I didn't keep one full. So please look at these pictures to see the ginormous lobster that we had yesterday. Hey, Theory. Hey, Giovanni. Hey. So here's the top of the lobster, this funny little guy. They're world renowned and everybody knows about them all over the world. Um, here in the Bay of Funday, we have some of the coldest waters in the world and it's particularly fitting of that right now. It's particularly cool here, but it's now the time that the harvest season for lobster is. And um, what's really neat, and I'll tell you about these lobster is they're very full, which is exactly what you want. So here's the tail. This is probably one of the pieces we like the most. I'm hopefully not going to fling it onto my laptop as I'm doing this. Um, I have already taken the meat out. So this is what it looks like inside. And these ones are particularly absolutely full of meat. 
there's a few delicacies as a female one would have red eggs which would mean the row not something that i like to eat as much but i was a very much a delicacy my father absolutely loved that one so um we didn't have that so this is what the lobster meat looks like when it comes out of the tail so it still almost looks the same as it was in and it's interesting because you can still see where it maintains some of that neat red flavor um, that is full of nutrients too. So the good thing is, is it's tasty and it's extremely healthy. So, and then there's these big claws. So in these, we take out this beautiful chunk of meat. So it goes from this, let me get it held right. I don't want to drip it over my laptop to this beautiful chunk of meat that comes out of the inside of that. So we, have a few delicate recipes to share with you. And I'm gonna start just for a few minutes before we roll over. And Roz, I thought we'd get you going with some brunch right after. So I'm gonna get this pot of lobster. So I've started a chowder. One of our favorite things to do is a chowder and it's extremely popular in Atlantic Canada. And when you come here, you're gonna see it on a lot of menus. And I can tell you, most of the times when you get a chowder, you really can't go wrong. So my chowder, I'm gonna need to get my hand and hold this. My chowder, and you see this nice steamy bit that's going on. I really wanted to get a, a part of a lot of flavor into it. So what I've done, and a lot of the time here in Atlantic Canada, we get a large pot out and we boil down all the shells and all the different pieces that came out of the lobster. Well, what I did with this particular one, is I took his little rib cage and I'm gonna show you as I take it out. And this is what I used inside of it. So all the little legs and they've been boiling in this pot and simmering here for a couple of hours. And I'm gonna get mom to give me a hand here and just to take the legs out and keep the good stuff. So we can pull those legs out. So she's gonna pull the legs out, thrust these in as I sauteed some beautiful onions and I chopped up some lovely carrot and I chopped it up really fine and it gives a nice sweetness to the chowder and it looks very pretty in the chowder too. So the other thing that I have put in here is I chopped some celery up really in a nice size, but I also left a bunch of the celery leaves. And the reason why I wanna say that is the celery leaves, perfect mom, give an enormous amount of flavor into the chowder. Now I'm gonna hold this up in the bowl. Hopefully I can get it there. See, you can see the chunks of onion and leaves. So that's gonna go back into the chowder. And so this mixture, and this is sort of one of the tricks that I do with my chowder. Thanks, mom. Is this is all, now this is a liquid, it's cooked down. And now I'm gonna add some diced potatoes. And I'm gonna let them cook through. So as we're sitting here, those potatoes are gonna go in. And when the potatoes are almost cooked, I'm gonna add this bowl of lobster to it. And the reason why I'm not gonna cook all the lobster through in it right now, I used the shells to gain all the flavor and I'm gonna cook the potatoes down, but I wanna add the lobster in last because I really don't want it to sit and soak in that liquid and cook through it because the lobster's already cooked that's going in. So it's a trick because I wanna keep that flavor, but remember, I put all the lobster flavor in the pot to begin with. And the only seasoning that I used in this, because it really already has salt, lobster's nice and salty, properly cooked, it's cooked in salt water. I used, and also a little bit of the Urban Joy dried onion seasoning, and she's got this wonderful herbal salt blend. So inside of it is crushed thyme, rosemary, parsley, onion, and celery seed. So I put a little bit of that just to give a little bit of extra flavor. So I'm gonna give this to you to mom to throw back on the pot and we're gonna let that start cooking. And we're gonna show you when I fold that lobster into it. And um, so we're gonna come back around to show that next piece of that recipe coming through. But Roz, how about we go start with some brunch with you? Fantastic. How are you, everybody? Thank you for joining us again this week. We're fantastic. So I do a brunch. And as Michelle was relating to, she was saying that um, when my children were growing up, 
we were the house to be for a sleepover on Saturday night because we always threw a brunch the morning before or the morning after, which is Sunday. So my kids love French toast. So I'm going to show you the French toast recipe that I usually do. I don't do it typically. I do a little bit of a twist on it. So uh, you start off with uh, two eggs in a bowl. You whisk them and you add one cup of milk. I'm going to put coconut milk in because I prefer coconut milk over cow's milk. You can use almond milk. You can use whatever milk you'd like, or you can do half and half, half milk, half, uh, half um, cow's milk and half almond milk. So then what I do is I have to add a little bit of sweetener. So of course, I'm going to use the maple syrup from Briggs Maple because that's just who we love. I get to use maple twice in this recipe actually, which I really enjoy. So there's the maple syrup, just a little dash. And I brought home some from the Dominican Republic, some white vanilla. So I'm gonna put a dash of vanilla in there as well. And of course you all know that I love cinnamon or at least anyone that's been on the show before. So I'm gonna put, it's supposed to be a teaspoon, but you know what, I, uh, I overzealous on the cinnamon at all times. So, you know, that's just the way I roll. So you just whisk that up and then you put that in a pie plate, which I have right under here. And that just gives it so that the recipe is easier to dunk your bread in. So that is there. So my little bit of a twist is, I'll show you what I, what I mean by twist, is I like putting, uh, rolling it in cornflakes. So a cornflake is just a, a breakfast cereal that we have here in Canada and probably around the world actually. And it's just a corn, whoa, where's my camera? There it is. Uh, just a cornflake. And when you touch it, it crumbles. So as you can see, it crumbles right in. So what I did was I pre, uh, cr uh, crush the cornflakes. And of course, because I like cinnamon so much, I'm going to put a dash of cinnamon in my cornflakes. So the outside of this, of the French toast is cinnamon in the as well. So then what you do, and I'll get rid of my coffee. So then what you do is you, you take your bread, sliced bread, you put it in your, your milk and egg recipe. And you just gently roll it over. Make sure it's absorbed quite well. You put it onto a hot, either frying pan. I have a skillet. And then you just roll it in the crumbs. So then you get a crispy coating on it. Whoops, it soaked so well it broke. I'm gonna put it on the crack, I'm gonna put it on the griddle. And you can hear it sizzle as we go. So you just continue on back and forth. And, and this recipe usually does about eight slices of bread. So I'm gonna put two on because my son's still sleeping and I wanna make sure that they're nice and hot for when he wakes up. Your fingers get a little gooey. And again, I'm gonna throw this one up, put this one on there as well. There we go. And so once the they cook for about two or three minutes on the um, griddle, and I'll show you my griddle in a minute when I roll, when I toss it over. But in the meantime, what I do is I do a berry mixture in the to put on top. So this is raspberries, blueberries, um, and blackberries. And what I do with this, again, I said I use maple syrup twice. So I put a very generous gl glollop of maple syrup, and then I take a half a lemon. And I squish the lemon in the berry mixture. And what that does is it gives it a sweet and a citrusy taste to it, which I really enjoy. And then I just stir that up and I put a little bit, because you know me, a little bit of cinnamon in there. And what that does is that goes on top. And of course, Michelle has shown this to you before and she in introduced me to the coconut, um, milk whipped topping. So I have some whipped topping ready as well. And afterwards, I shall show you what it all looks like after. So that's, uh, I will uh, flip those and I'll show you the finished product in a bit. But it takes about two or three minutes on the griddle on each side. We like them a little crispy. So that's why we like it that way. If you uh, soak your bread longer, it gets 
uh, doughier, so it cooks, it takes a little longer to cook. But other than that, it's delicious, it's divine. Of course, my son likes uh, hot sausages. So we went to the market yesterday and picked up some fresh Kurtz sausages, who is a, a, a really famous uh, sausage maker in this area and hot Italian all the way with a little bit of hot mustard on the side and a little bit of bacon. Typically we would put uh, pan fries and eggs and omelet and all that, but it's just my son and I here. So we don't want to make up too much food because you know, we're, uh, we're going to be a little full with, I think, just this French toast. So back to you, Michelle. Thank you, Rosalind. Any and what a beautiful a dinner for a breakfast for you, for the two of you. And of course, they knew you were going to put cinnamon in that. Oh, yes, definitely. I love how the nice thing about French toast, and it gives us opportunity to have some eggs in there, too. So you're really getting that extra protein in peace. So if you didn't want to cook the eggs on the side, it's all right, because you've already got the eggs in your French toast piece. Very, very popular recipe over here. So Richard, I think what we're gonna need to do is pair a couple of cocktails and some Mother's Day history. He's got some fun things that um, looked up about where in and around the origins of this day. And we appreciated Jacqueline sharing earlier from Vietnam because it's, a, it's, it's recognized in a different way in that country. So a note, Giovanna, if you wanna type in the notes, if it's Mother's Day recognized there as well, so it's always fun to learn those different things as the different countries celebrate. And um, I will tell you that the, the chowder over here smells absolutely amazing. The potatoes are almost cooked through. So we're gonna add in that other little bit with the lobster meat and everything. But the other ingredient I forgot that I sneak in my lobster chowder is a little bit of cooked bacon. And again, I throw that in at the end and I dice it up but it's, it, it gives a nice extra, because there's already salt in the lobster, but it just gives a nice different texture and flavor to it. So we're gonna stir that together and we come back around, we'll be excited to put our lobster roll, but Richard, we're getting a little thirsty. So let's roll over to you in Ireland and see what's going on. And I know your mom has made a pineapple upside down cake that I am so excited to hear about after we hear about your drinks. Already? Unmute, Richard. There we Hello, go. Hello, everyone. Well, my mother, happy Mother's Day, first of all, Mom. <laughs> my mom's a vegetarian, so <laughs> cooking for her is either really easy or really hard. So I asked her what she'd like for Mother's Day, and she said French, or sorry, a, a grilled cheese sandwich with a side salad. And I said, that's perfect. And so what I've done is I've put together kind of a nice thing. I've got, um, now I've used this before on the show. I think you'll recognize this is my three cheese bread, right? This is the three cheese bread. So this is uh, going in there along with, which kind of cheese is it? It's Gouda cheese today, which I've cut to fit perfectly into the bread. So it's, it's actually on here just like that. <laughs> And uh, it's buttered, the bread is buttered on both sides. So it's buttered here and over here. Now this is kind of a harder rye bread and it'll be augmented by a softer white uh, three cheese bread. So I'm gonna put that in here now, it's all ready to go. And I've made two, actually, oh, I forgot. I also have some pepper cheese slices just to add a little bit of spice to it, really small ones. So I'm gonna put them inside this is going to taste great, Mom. You're going to love it. <laughs> and then I'm going to cook these. It should take a few minutes. I'll just turn this up a little bit now. Now, Mother's Day, um, <clears throat> yeah, I was looking into the history of Mother's Day. It's quite interesting. Um, a woman named Anna Jarvis started the tradition as we know it today in the United States. She's a Baptist church member and an, an activist, she was a suffragette. <clears throat> so she started it in 1905 and it, it, became, uh, it became popular and Congress was even asked at one point would they, would they make it a holiday, a national holiday? And of course the room was all full of men so they just kind of jokingly said, ha ha ha, what's next? Uh, Mother's Day, mother-in-law's day? So <laughs> didn't go further than that. <laughs> but it did spread. Now one of the things that's unique about her is that it was so successful that she became resentful of it and actually copyrighted 
the um, the date, which was the second Sunday in May, and she started to sue uh, companies like Hallmark, believe it or not, because they were commercializing it too much. This was in, in the 1920s. Obviously, that was a battle she lost. So, <laughs> but uh, Mother's Day, yeah, it's spread around the world. It's it's all over the place. Every country has a different. Well, not every country has a different date, but it tends to go in into clusters. Like what I've found is that North and South America tend to be this day. Where I am here in Ireland and <clears throat> the UK, it's um, it's in March. It's um, it was March 14th this year. So it has to do with the second Sunday after Lent. And um, Scandinavian countries, they tend to be earlier um, and they combine it with, wo with Women's Day. So I don't know how women would feel about that. You only get the one day instead of the two days if you're a mom. Um, yeah, kind of interesting stuff. But you know what's more interesting, I think, is that the word mother is basically the oldest, most well-known word of all the languages ever. And that's what combines, that's what was led to the main discovery of the Indo-European language groups, which spread from originally from Europe all the way to India and now include North and South America as well, because mother is the first word a baby speaks in most, in pretty much every language. And all those languages, it's almost exactly the same, even though it's evolved over 50,000 years. So here in English, we know it as mother. I know it in German as, as Mutar. Um, in India, it's matter. In French, it's mamer. You know, it's, it's the same word everywhere we go. So, um, and that's one of the things that they were able to track. If, if you had that as your base word for mother, then your language was probably part of the Indo-European languages group. So it's a re really amazing thing. Fater is very close too, but, but it's not, as, it's not as quite as much as mother. But uh, well, I, I said Fater, that's the German word. Um, it often goes to Padre as well. Padre, father, um, English father, papa. We have papa as well. So it goes with F and P. So that's one of the interesting things. Um, Richard, I just want to add a point there. It's interesting, just as you're, as you're getting there with your mother point, which that's beautiful to share that. And then we often say as teachers and as a language school that, you know, the first person that we think about in our lives is we trust our mother and our father, our parents, right? You know, the next most trusted person as we grow, I think around the world is our teachers. So um, those are the individuals that end up big influencers in our lives. So I love that you're sharing those facts and especially yeah. coming from you a teacher. So thank you, Richard. Yeah, I, I find it fascinating. And, and you'll see like, um, the other thing that's that really unifies the Indo-European languages beyond those two words is counting. So the counting is, is so similar. One, two, three, un, deux, trois, ein, um, yeah. un, deux, trois, that's French, uh, German, eins, zwei, drei. It's, it's almost the same all the way through. So if you can count and say mother, then you can imagine, um, what it was like traveling before everybody had a, an international language. You'd have a few, you know, root words that you could work with, build on. And then of course you'd make some food and that would be really the, the first international language. Now, as far as a cocktail, I didn't really have a cocktail ready. I'm just gonna make my mom a uh, Irish coffee without the cream. So here we go. <laughs> and unfortunately she's gonna be all the way over there and Ireland or uh, Liverpool, so I'll have to enjoy this for you, Mom. So a little bit of whiskey. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> it's a uh, cold brew, cold brew, some kind of new distiller they have. Now here's the salad I have ready. The grilled cheese sandwiches are almost ready. So here's the um, organic celery, organic. You can see there. A um, little bit of cucumber and some some lettuce leaves, and a little bit of balsamic vinegar. vinegar. And now the cheese is ready. The sandwiches are ready. The grilled cheese is ready. This is gonna look good. <laughs> I love your cooking station, Richard. The fact that he's got the perfect sit, serve, and eat area. You see this going on, eh, Maureen? That looks beautiful. Yummy. Tell us what we got. 
I'm going to cut one of them open so you can see inside. Hang on. Oh, it's nice and nice and crispy. This is something my mom used to make for me a lot when I was a kid. So good breakfast, good lunch or breakfast. <laughs> that looks good, eh? Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I wouldn't actually have this unless my mother was, you know, <laughs> requesting it. But it's a good, it's a good side thing. It's it's not just green nonsense. This is this will be a nice little brunch for me today. Thanks, mom. <laughs> Thanks, Richard. We really enjoyed that. And cheers to you, Maureen. There's a nice Mother's Day treat. I know you didn't, at least I'm fortunate I know I get to cook for my mom who's right beside me, but I hope that I earned some love and some warmth from Ireland to you, Maureen. And know that your son's having a cocktail and having a treat on your behalf. I think that's pretty special. One of our favorite things about this opportunity to come together is, is to bring friends and to bring individuals together that have a chance. And we're so grateful that you spent Sunday morning with us. And I know last week, you know, this is 40 weeks, 4-0. This actually is the 40th week this week. I did a miscount when I uh, promoted something the other day. So I think it's kind of neat that it's fitting that it's a celebration of Mother's and Mother's Day. So um, Maureen, Jack, we're going to back over to you in a minute, Maureen. Uh, we'd love to hear about your pineapple upside down cake because I think it's really fitting right after that wonderful son of yours. And I can tell you, as you're getting set up and unmuted, uh, Mom and I just added all the ingredients to the chowder and it looks absolutely believable, unbelievable. And we're going to be, it does look believable, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, we're going to be showing you a beautiful bowl of that shortly, but let's go to Liverpool, Nova Scotia with Maureen and showing us her beautiful, which is one of her favorites, pineapple upside down cake. And what an absolutely amazing recipe. So tell us what you got, Maureen. Thanks, Michelle. Yes, yeah, so good morning, everyone. And uh, very happy Mother's Day to all of you. Very wonderful mothers as well. And uh, I'm sure uh, uh, it's going to be a very special day for all of you. So um, what I've done is I've made up uh, one of my favorite uh, dishes, and, and actually it's a, such an easy dish as well, is the upside down pine, pineapple cake. And uh, I have uh, prepared it already. So what I'm just going to do is run you through um, how you actually um, do this. It is such a simple cake that I'm sure anyone can actually do it. Um, you just need be the basic um, white cake recipe and any white cake recipe will do. And then from, from that point, um, then you get into the ingredients for the actual pineapple uh, part of it. And uh, I've used, um, unfortunately, I've had to use a canned pineapple because I couldn't get a fresh pineapple. And, uh, you know, you can either have the slices or you can have, you can have it, you know, with bits and pieces or whatever. The slices are much better if you can get it. So I'll just run you through uh, what you need for this recipe. You need uh, a quarter of a cup of butter and half a cup of brown sugar and eight to 10 pineapple slices. You need um, a one and a half cup flour, one teaspoon of baking powder, powder one quarter um, teaspoon of baking soda, um, a touch of salt and about uh, 85 grams of butter. And you need a three quarters cup of sugar, two egg whites and a, 30, a third cup of milk. And with the egg whites, what you do is you separate those and beat them, beat them separately and then add the egg whites at the very end of when, you're, when you've got your mixture all ready. So the first thing to do when you're actually preparing for this um, type of cake is you take the butter and the brown sugar, put it into a saucepan and melt that. Just get it nice, nicely melted because that's actually going to go on the, on the base of your baking dish with your pineapple. So you, when, you, when you're preparing it, pour all of that, the, the melted butter and the brown sugar and your pineapple into the base of your baking dish. And then after that, it's it's really quite simple because you mix up your your white your white cake mix and just put that all on top. And then bake it in the oven for um, I guess about uh, 40 minutes for at 325. Don't make it too hot because it really needs because there's a lot of moisture at the bottom. It needs a, a little bit more time to absorb that and and to actually. Um, cook to bake. So um, I, I 
I think it's probably one of the easiest recipes, but it's such a delicious recipe as well. And as you can see, it really, it really does look very, very yummy. And uh, all of the juices kind of permeate through the cake while it's baking. So that's it. <laughs> and I've got all the ingredients lined up here for you. You can see all the brown sugar, baking powder, baking soda, butter, eggs. And I use the GMO free, um, no bleach, um, actual white all, white all purpose flour, which is very, very good. It doesn't have any, any additives or anything like that. It's very, very good. And then, like I say, normally if I could get my hands on an actual pineapple, fresh pineapple, I would use that. But I've used um, pine, uh, Del Monte pineapple slices. And those are a good choice, Maureen. You know what I like, you know, we're all about the fresh, but please make such a good recipe like that, even if you don't. So that is fantastic. And I'm going to get you to email me afterwards so that we can post that one on the website. And, and, and do me a favor and take a couple of good pictures. And by the way, there's a request from Helen. She would like a piece purulated up if you could. Mm -hmm. She's behind me and we're going to get the letter and she's like, I'd like Maureen to send me a piece of that, please. <laughs> I look forward to, that's one of her favorite as well. She's a big pineapple fan. So I think we hit a really good one on moms in pieces. Uh, Jacqueline would like some delivered to Vietnam as well. So we're <laughs> going to have to get on that one. Yeah, Courier is <laughs> Canada's biggest um, courier company. So that's why she said purolated. Exactly. Thanks to work with them. Isn't that funny? Thank you, Richard. Sometimes we'll see those things to realize. So courier it over via purolator would be the one that we're looking for. So we are, I'm going to sneak in um, one other lobster recipe before we go over to you, Jacqueline. And we're going to be wrapping up our Mother's Day special with an unbelievably great chocolate cake. And I want to thank Scott from Scott's Kitchen and, and Scott's um, Buffalo Sauce. This is his lemon drop one, which is my favorite. No, it's not in the cake. But um, he gave me the cake recipe and I made it. And I really can't believe how good and how delicious this is. And it's gluten-free, dairy-free, and sugar-free. So you guys are not gonna believe this recipe. So we're gonna wrap up with chocolate cake, which just also happened to be my mother's favorite. And Rosalind, we're gonna wanna see that brunch when it's ready as well. So we're gonna put together, mom's gonna grill this roll while I'm gonna show you how fast the roll grills. One of the most important things when you do a lobster, lobster roll in Canada, and it sounds very funny, but very traditional, you'll see lobster rolls done in all different types of buns here in Atlantic Canada, trust me. And for all of those around the world, believe it or not, McDonald's has a McLobster in Atlantic Canada, for real. And they do a good job. I think you've had one along, you know, they do a good job. But of course, you know what? They have Fun Day Lobster. And again, I wanna give a big shout out to Collins to say thank you for these guys coming along to the party. But we use a very traditional lobster roll. So, or it's a hot dog bun, right? Or a sausage bun, depending on. And I'll tell you, it's a soft white bread. And the nice thing about it is we put a little bit of butter on either side. And what my mom's doing right now is getting that, kind of like Richard did with his grilled cheese. Exactly, Richard. Getting that nicely toasted on either side. So the filling is pretty traditional. So you see this beautiful bowl of cut up lobster here. And you're gonna see one little thing. I, of course, because we all know the herb and next week is herbs, everybody. Next week is featuring herbs. So we're really excited. We're gonna to get to each one of our chefs to pick an herb that they're gonna feature. And then we're gonna bring that all together. And Angela from Urban Joy is gonna be here. She's got some special treats. So I put a little bit of fresh thyme in it. And then the other ingredient that we're gonna put into this, and I know we'll sit down here, is I've got some diced celery, and there's probably in that amount of lobster, there is probably a cup and a half of cooked lobster. And then I'm gonna put about a tablespoon of diced celery. I diced it up fairly small because I don't want a big piece of celery. I'm just gonna pull this up a little bit better to see. 
I just want a little bit of the crunch and it's about the freshness. So I tell you, celery really is the ultimate one to use. I've seen people put some onions and different things in it. They're okay. I find it overpowers the flavor of the lobster. So I put a little bit of mayonnaise. So there's about a tablespoon of mayonnaise on top. And all we're gonna do is mix that up. The only other seasoning I'm gonna put into this, because the lobster already has that, remember I said lobster properly cooked, is cooked in salt water. And um, so it already has some nice salt in it. And I can tell you down at Collins, when you get a chance to come visit here, they have a huge tank in an area. I'm hoping to get down there later this summer and maybe film an episode from there. Um, so there's that lobster all toasted up. Mom's gonna be over here with a bun in a second here. Oh, you already have a plate, good for you. So here's how traditional a lobster roll is. The other thing that I like to put on top of it is I don't want a hard onion as I put a little bit of fresh chives, which I've picked out of my garden because beautifully, the gardens are coming up everywhere right now. So we have uh, chives growing up, we've got flat leaves parsley growing up, I've got fresh thyme growing in my backyard. And I can tell you that Rosalind has done a complete makeover on her backyard. And we're gonna be really excited to share throughout this year, the wonderful things that we're growing. And there it is, look at that. So again, Maureen, it comes with that. The expert griller, look at that. Thank you, Helen. That, and it smells divine right now. So what is it? My mom yesterday, she asked me to put, uh, well, she said if, if I were actually making it for her, she would want onions in the in the grilled cheese. But since I don't like onions, I, you know. <laughs> so mom's giving an update over here. Maureen, she too would take some sliced onion and her grilled cheese. Yes, yes would, right, yeah. she went. So mom, I'm gonna sell this. One of the things I like to do, and this is a beautiful piece of fresh lettuce. Right now, um, Angela, and I think I posted some pictures on Cooking Club, has unbelievable greenhouses. We were down for a tour last week. Scott from Sketch Kitchen was looking at because she's growing peppers for his buffalo sauce. So I think that's something really to cool to see the work that we do here because that's our producers working together to make sure that they're using um, ingredients from those fresh gardens that are gonna blend it into his sauce. Tell me that doesn't look right. I, I don't mind more. <laughs> okay, she's asking me to put more lobster in the roll that I've got pretty stuff. And she's like, you can put more. <laughs> That's okay, Helen, on that one. And also look at this, piling this on and making sure that that's gonna look absolutely decadent. So there's your lobster roll. I know I can see Emily with a look in her face. Cannot wait, Giovanni, I know. Lean in, we need smell o vision on that one. And, and you know what I'm gonna do? Oh. I took the first bite. Michelle! <laughs> You already had one earlier, just so y'all know. Oh, okay. That, that, now you're that. forgiven. Now you're forgiven. <laughs> Here's the best part. I'm going to stay here and hang out with you, and she's going to eat the whole thing. Oh, I am. Yeah. So, Mom, take a bite of that. Enjoy. Oh, Helen. Mm. Oh. That lobster is so sweet and delicious. And I really want to say again, thanks for the guys on Collins. Roz, we have a special treat for you for Mother's Day here as well. But Jacqueline, yeah. I am very excited about your rice. And there's a story behind this rice recipe and, and it brings, what is it? Good health, good luck. And I wanna say, is it called GAC rice? Am I saying that right, Jacqueline? All right. Hopefully she's got her video ready to roll there and let's go to Vietnam and learn a little bit more about this rice recipe. And I have to tell you, a major potato salad, I will be making it again. It was absolutely tremendous. One of my favorite things each week is to learn a recipe that you bring into us from Vietnam and that we always are able to get those. Uh, re the we could go to the grocery store here, Jacqueline, and get those things and recreate that. So thank you so much for bringing that to us each week. So. I'm going to put okay, myself on you. And I don't know if you guys can hear mom behind me, but she's over there going, mm -hmm. <laughs> she's a happy camper over there. So 
So Jacqueline, please. Okay, thank you, Michelle. Uh, on this uh, special occasion, I'd like to share with you the recipe of gum thumb, broken rice. And you know, it is one of the top 10 most popular certain Vietnamese dishes. Uh, as you can see here, uh, the dish is uh, simple. We have rice on the top of uh, the rice. We have fried, uh, fried uh, scallions or fresh onions, uh, some cucumbers, um, fried egg, pickles, and uh, grilled pork. However, the most uh, The most important, interesting, the, the most interesting thing here is uh, the broken rice. Uh, this is what I search uh, on the internet. Gum tam is a traditional Vietnamese dish that's typically sold as street food. It consists of broken and imperfect rice grains that were traditionally churned away after milling process. But nowadays, is the signature dish of Fortune City or Saigon. And uh, broken rice has a texture that's similar to normal rice, just smaller. And uh, I'd like to show you the uh, illustrations of broken rice here, here, above, and below. You can see the normal rice. And uh, according to uh, Sheng Nam, this is a famous writer and also the cultural researcher. He said that broken rice is the popular dish of the working class in the Mekong Delta. When these workers migrated to urban areas, they brought with them the dish and kept changing it. But the use of the small grains, which are actually fragments of rice grains broken by milling or during drying, remains unchanged. And like normal rice, broken rice is boiled or steamed. But the perfectly cooked broken rice is dry and should not be sticky. So in order to avoid the rice being sticky, uh, I chose the way to steam the rice. So uh, for in order to steam the rice, uh, after soaking the rice in water for at least one hour, we drain it and we place the pandan leaves uh, on the bottom of the steamer. Then we pour the rice onto them. Then we steam the rice until tender. Um, the sauce, the sauce is the spirit of the dish. And as you know, many broken rice places were churned just because they failed to create a decent sauce. The sauce served with the dish is savor, savory, thanks to refined sugar, Primary, uh, prim, premium fish sauce uh, and sometimes a little bit of pineapple juice. Garlic and chili are also added. However, um, I chose, I, I, I didn't use uh, pineapple juice. Instead of pineapple juice, I used coconut uh, water. As you can see here, um, the amount of coconut water is the same as the amount of fish sauce. And I use the uh, rock sugar and we mix them together and we have to cook it for half an hour. And after that, we cool it before we serve it. And another thing that is pickles. Pickles are a mainstay of the dish. And certain pickles are usually made of lotus stem. Uh, as you can see here, the white here is uh, lotus stem, uh, daikon radish, and carrot. But uh, I, I just used two ingredients uh, that is radish and carrot uh, to make the pickles. Uh, we cut into shapes of choice, and the vegetables are then soaked in a mixture of vinegar, sugar, and salt. And uh, about the meat, fried eggs and chicken have become favorite pairings with broken rice. However, cơm tấm sườn bì chả, in English we say broken rice with pork chop, pink skin and egg meat loaf is still the favorite 
old timer and this is uh, what I uh, I did uh, I chose pork chops so uh, the, the the meat I use uh, was uh, pork, cho uh, pork chops and um, the way the way I did uh, as I, I show you before uh, put red chili pepper cilantro roots garlic onions soy sauce oyster sauce cooking sauce sesame sauce seasoning powder honey uh, you can replace honey by the maple syrup into the food processor and puree them and um, the, um, the amount uh, we, we can adjust the amount uh, normally I use a bunch of garlic uh, five onions three um, uh, tea, uh, tablespoons uh, of um, soy sorry not oyster sauce uh, two tablespoons of uh, soy sauce uh, three tablespoons of uh, cooking uh, sauce sorry cooking oils not sauce and uh, three tablespoons of honey and uh, just one red chili pepper and after that we uh, marinate the pork chops uh, in the sauce uh, for at least four hours uh, actually I uh, marinate many marinated the, the chops for one day in the refrigerator and uh, before we uh, grill the pork uh, we have to preheat the oven for about 10 to 15 minutes uh, grill, grill the pork for about 20 minutes and after that we put some honey on it and continue uh, grilling for 10 minutes and finally oh no, uh, that, the final thing i have to do is uh, um, we have to fry the scallions chop them and fry them for about three minutes at the end we add uh, a little salt Fried scallions is uh, the must for this kind of dish. As you can see here, we put them on the top of the rice. And when the meat is ready, it's time for us to enjoy it. Place the, the uh, fried eggs, the pork, fried scallion, some cucumbers, some pecans, and then don't forget to have the sauce. Okay, that's it. Enjoy it. Thank you for watching. Jacqueline, every yes. week. So beautiful. <laughs> Everybody you. step your hands up. Richard's making heart signs. You uh, see thank you so much. Menu. Mm -hmm. Everybody's giving you wild and wild pieces. You know, Jacqueline, that again, do you know, I just love how you show the simplicity of those ingredients, but you show technique. And I hope that everybody else that we do that, but for here, we're used to these techniques. I love the tricks and soaking the rice and the different pieces in it. That was really tremendous. Thank you so much. And I Mom, mom's over the side going, are you going to make that this week? So Rosalind, we'll make sure yeah. you have you down for dinner on that night. And, and yeah, I'm so happy. Thank yeah, you so much. You, you know local, what? I got, go ahead, when you become me. local, Jacqueline, I want to be the guy doing the camera work, okay? You can just call me over. I'll film you making everything and then just hang around afterwards. <laughs> I got this beautiful pork at the market yesterday that from and it is really really and i can see get away i'm going to be using that to make that exact recipe so um and i hope this is one of the things that inspires everybody every week okay and i'm sorry sorry to interrupt you michelle uh one tip that i forgot to tell you uh in order to make the pork tender don't use salt to marinate them no salt the salt will make the pork tough. 
So never use salt to marinate the pork, the meat. Okay, that's it. It is a good idea. No, that's a good tip. You know why, Jacqueline? Because the, the salt will draw the moisture out of the meat. So I'll add on to that. And I'll give Jim a little shout out. Uh, Jim Kitts from Fun Day Mud Pottery, one of our favorite potters. This afternoon, there's a pottery throwdown. Hopefully, Roz, take it. And, and basically, there's 10 different people that are artisans in our community that are all going to get together. Maureen, you would love this. And they're all going to get together and they're going to be showing their craft. They're going to be making different things. This is a beautiful piece that Jim had made, and I keep salt in it. So it made me think of that. So um, let's talk about some final pieces of some recipes as we wrap up today. Well, first of all, there's the beautiful chowder. Everybody can see how gorgeous that turned out, and it is really warm. So I'm going to hold this up. Nice and thick, you can see like, it's still sitting on the top. I said to mom, hmm, you might need some more liquid in that. She's like, no, no, we don't need any more liquid in that. So, you know what, and it's so beautiful. I am gonna turn this down a little bit here and let everybody see the top. Cause I think what you can end up seeing is, you can see the little bits of bacon. You can see that that's the lobster you're sitting on top. And then I cube the potatoes up and hopefully you can see the little bits of orange in there and you can see the beautiful carrots and onions that were in there. So the flavor is as much as I hoped it would be. I do wanna give an extra and Rosalind, this is definitely gonna be on that beautiful herbal salt substitute that we've been using. Um, because in, in it's, and if you look at it, I just wanna kind of show everybody the consistency of it. So remember, pull that plate right over. So great underneath, perfect. Can you hold that up? I don't want to drop it on my laptop, but I want you to see, you can see that falling. It's almost like dust, everybody. It is like the finest ground and it is all those dried herbs together. So Angela does a great blend. Anybody locally can get that from her, but it really does replace using salt, Jacqueline. It gives you the beautiful flavoring of it but it's all done with dried local herbs, which is wonderful to do. Um, I use that in the chowder as, as a different substitute piece. Of course, I put some regular onion, but I use some organic dried onion. And I have to tell you, the chowder is one of the best chowders that I've made. So it's always nice to add a little bit of a different ingredient into the recipe that you were really traditional about and ended up coming out that way. So Roz, before I... And with our wonderful chocolate cake, I'd like to go visit your kitchen and see how Perfect. that French toast turned yes. out. Yes. So the French toast turned out really well. As you can see, it's lightly crisp. I don't know if it's uh, if the camera angle is perfect. So I love peanut butter. I have loved peanut butter my whole life. So instead of using butter on my French toast, I've spread a great portion of peanut butter on top. And then... I'm going to add my berries with the lemon and the cinnamon and the maple syrup, of course. And then I am going to add a dollop of my whipped topping on top. And of course, just because we can, we add a drizzle of maple syrup on top with a sprinkle of cinnamon. And there you go. Now the, the sausages and the bacon are cooking as we speak. And my son has set his alarm for 10 a.m. So we're gonna eat right at 10, by the way. <laughs> yeah, he came up to check the time on what time breakfast is. So there you go. He, we already know what time he's coming. So that's the end of the, uh, I'll take a picture and put it online as well. But thanks for joining me in my kitchen. I really appreciate it. Roz, that looks absolutely beautiful. And I'm going to say, you know, I love that coconut whip. And I talked a little bit for a minute about it. And I need a can of coconut, Mom. I read a bit. Thought I was going to grab one. So there is one trick to making this coconut whip. So I'm actually going to start with the topping. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to tell you what's in the base of it. Um, you need a can to make sure that it's whole coconut milk. So I'm going to say we use this organic, a little bit different wine, but it needs to be a whole coconut milk, really important. Put it in the refrigerator. 
key to making this work correctly. And one of the things is anybody who's worked with coconut, canned coconut milk before is when you put it in the fridge, it's going to separate. There's going to be a liquidy part and then it's going to feel like a waxy piece. We're going for the waxy piece. So often what I do is I'll stick my knife through it and find a spot and I'll drain the liquid. I said, Jacqueline's smiling. You know, you've done this one. And I drain it out and I keep the liquid because I will use it. Jacqueline, that's a really great way to cook something else. And I always, I always make sure that I use that. But what we want is that meatier piece. So thank you, mom. So what we do with that is I put it in and I'm rising it earlier in a dish. And then I add a little bit of maple syrup, shout out to Briggs maple syrup, um, into that. And then we whip it up with it, either a hand blender or an immersion blender. I did Jackson and Sherman app tools. So I use one of these fancy, fancy hand immersion blenders. And it usually whips up really good. But I'm going to tell you, mine didn't whip up as good as yours, Roz, this time for my demo. So um, not sure which step I missed on that one. So let's talk about this incredible tray of chocolate brownies. Yes, it looks as good as it is. It's got a decent weight to it. So. There's four ingredients and everybody's gonna wanna make this one. So the first ingredient, sweet potatoes, three yams. And you're gonna need, and we're gonna put it down there, but I think last night we did, did Scott, if, I know that you get the original recipe. So if you could just chat that amount that we put into the chat box, that would be really great. So everybody's got the amount of measurements. So I cubed up these and I steamed the potatoes cause then I'm going to mash and puree them. So that's basically the ingredient that's going to go in is pureed mashed potatoes, uh, sweet potatoes. One of the things that I did make sure is I actually didn't boil them in water because I, um, I don't want to, I want to keep all the extra nutrients in the potato and the extra flavor in it. So I use a steamer. I steam the potato till they're really soft, get the water out. And I also did use the immersion blender because there's quite a bit of moisture in a sweet potato and they pureed up quite nicely. And I can tell you, this is one of those recipes when you make it, I highly recommend that you licking the spoon as you go. So the sweet potatoes go into the bowl. There was two cups of sweet potatoes. And then I use some almond butter. So this one happens to be a Kirkland. I do really like their, their creamy almond butter. It's really great to work with. So um, there was a half a cup of almond butter. And then I used a little bit of peanut butter as well. I have an organic um, sugar-free peanut butter because I wanted a bit of almond and peanut butter. The recipe, you could use just one, just the other. It really isn't either or. Um, and then cocoa powder. I happen to use an organic cocoa powder. This one, uh, to be honest with you, was expensive, but get a good cocoa powder, one that you really do enjoy. And of course, oddly enough, we're gonna say, what is the last ingredient? And God willing, it's maple syrup. And it really is the traditional that it was called for. I almost look at Richard going, did you substitute that out, Maple Chef Michelle? Actually, the really beautiful about this recipe is those are the simplicity. And thank you, Scott. So it's two cups of cooked sweet potato, one cup of a nut butter, and then a tablespoon of pure maple syrup. But I can tell you, I put three tablespoons of maple syrup in mine, and then definitely the half a cup of coconut powder. So as I take them out of the container, I did do a taste test on one side. And you know, the best part about this, everybody is gonna love is the absolute perfect density that comes out just like a brownie would. Baked up. And yes, I know everybody's, everybody's gonna go make this because it really is sweet potato, cocoa powder, almond butter. So as you're gonna see, my topping's a little bit drainier, but Nonetheless, there's going to be a little bit of a whip on that. And yes, this will go to Helen for her first bite because I, of course, taste tested the side of it when I made it. So there is the ultimate brownie, I guess it would be. And, and I can say when, um, I'll pass it over to you, mom, or stand over here and get a bite so you can tell everybody how, how it tastes. Um, 
it's one of those recipes, and I think Scott said when he first made it and handed it to his daughter, I think Cheyenne was 18 at the time, and her and her friend were eating it and said, wow, that's really, really good. He did use a little bit of a, a, a sweetie icing on it. And I think she caught in when he turned and said, oh, feel free to eat the whole tray. Because mm. as every parent and every mom today, how often would you turn to say to your child, eat the whole tray? How's that, mom? Delicious. Mm -mm -mm. So we're pretty excited each week that we take everybody's favorite recipes and we keep them healthy and we keep them real. Uh, we work with local people and local suppliers and we really bring from our kitchens to yours around the world. It means a lot. And we love everybody to take the time to come through our app, our pineapple upside down cake we wish could be on delivery, but we're gonna look forward to seeing everybody for herbs and herbalicious pieces. Thank you to Collins for the amazing lobster. Scott, we know we didn't put any of your spiciness into the recipes today, but you made up for it by sharing that, uh, that recipe. And I appreciate, um, and I think when you taste it, it'll be approved because the one that you dropped me off for a few weeks ago in this one tastes pretty close to the same. So one other tip in the brownie, and I think you might do it at home. If you wanted to throw some chunks of real chocolate, nuts or something in it as well, the batter whips up. And as I said went before I put it in the oven, I was licking the spoons because it was an extremely tasty batter. Um, so baking time on that one, that was a little bit trickier one. So it bakes at 350 for almost an hour. So that will be the one thing that I would say on that one. So it's a low and slow for almost an hour, but we'll make sure that we share that up. So everybody, Fairy, we see your son there. Have a very happy Mother's Day and uh, we'll see you next week for some wonderful herbs. From Herb Yes. Good day. Have a great Bye. day, Bye. everybody. Have a good time. Happy Mother's Day. Enjoy. Bye. 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 Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Bye. Enjoy Bye. your days. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Bye. Oh, they're beautiful. Bye. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God.